Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Alex and today we're going to talk about rendering PDFs from your Spring Webflux controllers. All right, so there are various ways to actually render a PDF from a controller, but the way we're going to do this is using Timeleaf to create an HTML and then use iText to convert that HTML into a PDF, which we then eventually render using Webflux. And all of that would be pretty much a piece of cake using Spring, but there are two things that we're going to take a closer look at. The first one is using the Spring template engine directly for Timeleaf. And the other ones being that we have to use external files. So we, we don't have to use them, but we want to use them, which is CSS or even image files. And that can become a little bit tricky um, as we will see in a second. So with that said, let's code. So as usual, we start in the IDE and let's take a quick look at the build file. So there's nothing too fancy here. We're using Spring Boot 253. Um, and these are the important dependencies. So there's Timeleaf, which we're going to use to create the actual template. Um, and there's, of course, about Flux. And there's iText PDF, which we use to convert the HTML to a PDF. So I've prepared a few files already for this tutorial. So let's take a quick look. Um, if we go to source main resources, then you can see um, there is the static folder. And underneath, there is the folder assets, which then is further divided into CSS and IMG for images. Um, and that's the reason why. So if you don't know this, um, if you have a folder named static, or I think public is the other one, um, underneath resources, that means that Spring will just expose that directly. So let's, let's start the application. Um, let's just run this. It's a pretty normal application, right? So we can see it has started. So now if I go to my application, and use assets, uh, let me just check, CSS, PDF, CSS, right? So this is, this is one of the files that I have created already. So there's static, assets, CSS, PDF, CSS. I don't have to provide static because that's just uh, implicit. We can take a look at the file and can see that's borrowing CSS. I don't wanna go over the details here because this is not gonna be a CSS tutorial. Um, but let me just fetch that file here and you can see that succeeds. So this means that I can already access the CSS file and the other one is the Spring logo. Look at how beautiful that is. It's a bit large on that screen, but there we go. So, and we will need both of them. We want to attach the logo to the final PDF and we want to use the CSS to actually style what we have on the PDF, right? All right, so the first thing that we need is um, a controller, so let's get started. So PDF controller. That's a simple controller. It's not a REST controller. Controller alert. So that should do. Uh, we want to render a template, right? So let's let's do this. Let's suspend fun. Uh, this is the HTML version, and afterwards we're going to use the um, the PDF version. So I need to get mapping. And I want to expose that under HTML. And I want to render a template using Timeleaf, and that template should be called, let's call it letter, right? So this will not work yet because there's no such template. Um, and if you're familiar with Timeleaf, um, there's a templates folder on the source main resources templates. And then we can create a new template and we have to name it letter because we're just using this here. And it's HTML. So yeah, we can add this to Git, it's fine. All right. So now there's a little bit of typing involved here. Let me just create some boilerplate HTML. Um, so it's HTML, um, so it's lang English. Um, we need the head. And uh, is there anything important? Yeah, there's character set. That's uh, UTF8, of course. Um, yeah, that should do for now. And then there's the body, which is important. And let's just print something like, oh, messed this up. Let's just say hello, right? So, um, some prints are not quite right. Oh yeah, just the exclamation mark. So that should do now. So this is a very basic um, HTML, right? So let's just go to the um, application. We can actually start this again. Stop and rerun it. So let's see, it's started. And let me switch to Safari because I think that's easier to see. If you go to 
localhost 8080 and then HTML. There you can see it says hello, right? So this is pretty basic stuff and we can also render the template that we have. And the next step is to make the template look a little bit nicer. So we add an image and we add some CSS. So let's go back to the ID. Um, there we go. All right, so let's jump to the template. And there are a few things that I wanna do right now. So first of all, I want to actually import the CSS that I have created. And the way to do this in Timeleaf is using link. And then I'm using the HTML friendly attributes. Uh, it's add, and then the path, uh, it's assets, it's CSS, and it's, what did I call it? Letter? No, I think I called it PDF CSS. Anything missing? Oh yeah, it's style sheet. So that should import the style sheet already. And let's also add the image. So I'm preparing something here already because I want the, the HTML to look like a page, like an A4 page already. So um, in the CSS, I'm using some styling that will make um, the, the content appear like pages. So I'm using paper CSS. Uh, I just extracted the relevant, relevant pieces. So what I can do is body class is A4. That's an existing class. And then I can use a section, which is my actual sheet class sheet and I want to give it some padding that's also defined and then we want to have the um, let's have the logo here and that's image and again we're using data it's not trip it's uh, I think it's source and the image is at assets IMG spring logo and it's an SVG. Oh, that should do. Um, let's write some greetings here. Hello, folks. And the paragraph is how we render nice PDFs. All right, and this, of course, now has to go. We don't need this anymore. So let me just rerun the application. Um, yeah, I think we're good. So up and rerun let's see it's booting and let's head over to Safari once more and refresh the page so and this is already pretty nice right what you can see here is that I was able to use the logo that I have in the in the assets folder and you can see that it displays the text and it looks like a page already right but make no mistake this is HTML this is not the PDF yet or anything it just looks like a page which is intentional because now I also can do something nice like going back to the HTML. Uh, since a section is actually a sheet, I can just create a new section and then say, okay, don't need this. Whoop, this is the second page. Uh, let me rerun this. Uh, let's check what has happened now in the meantime, Safari. So there you go, and this looks pretty nice, I think. So there's there's one page, and the other th section is actually rendered as a second page. So this works. So and this is pretty pretty old stuff, right? This is this is basic timely. If you just render a view, uh, as all been there before. But now we get to the actual meat of the of this tutorial, rendering something as a PDF. So let's see how we can actually do this. Let's stop the application, and we want to render the same template now as a PDF. So let's go back to the application where I have defined the PDF, no, the controller. Yeah, the PDF controller. So we add a new mapping and it uses the PDF endpoint. It's suspend fun PDF. Um, so this is gonna return a response entity and it's um, a byte array. This is how it's gonna render. So now let's see what we need. Um, let's start with the template. So how do we actually render a template? Right here, it's pretty implicit. I just returned the name, but how do I actually render something manually? Well, that's easy. I just need the template engine. Um, and that's gonna be the Spring Web Flux template engine. Could also use just a Spring template engine, I guess. Uh, that would also work here. 
And with that engine, I can render the HTML like so. So I said engine process template is just the name again. So that's letter. And it also expects um, second um, parameter, which is a context. And a context is, is just a map, actually. So I can use context like this. That already exists in time leaf. Um, context, time leaf, that's correct. And that's empty. So I, I don't need any anything of that. So this is the HTML. That will just render the HTML as we have seen this. So now how can we turn this into a PDF? That's pretty easy. Uh, let's create a byte array output stream, which will be the target for our PDF. So that's empty initially. And now we use the HTML converter of iText, convert to PDF. We add the HTML and the target, which is the PDF. So that will just write everything in the in the PDF in the byte array output stream that we have generated here. And now all we need to do is just return that. So we return our response entity. Okay. Um, and then we can add a header for the content disposition. So that's HTTP. Let's use HTTP headers content disposition. Um, yeah, so let me write it first and then explain it. Find um, I equals letter PDF. So I wrap this up um, and then explain it. So the content type is going to be media type application PDF. And the body is our PDF to byte array. So that will do. So for the content disposition, there are actually two options, or at least two, the two that I know of. So there's inline, and there's attachment. So what's the difference? If I use attachment here, now if I open that endpoint in a browser, this will prompt a file download dialog in a browser and ask me where I wanna save the PDF. That's quite um, invasive, I think. So I prefer the option inline. And what inline does is actually render the PDF directly in a browser uh, and then I still get the option to download it if I want to, but I can watch it right away, right? With attachment, I would have to download it first and then open it locally. So inline is much nicer um, and seems more uh, usable in, in certain scenarios. So I prefer that. Um, and this is the controller. So we create a response entity, um, set the content disposition header, uh, it's media tab application PDF, and we put in the byte array, and there we go. So let's just restart the application. Uh, let's go back to Safari. So uh, let's check. So the HTML is still working. So you can see um, HTML was the path that we've been using so far. Now I change that to PDF. I will see an error message. Okay, let's go to the IDE. Where are you? It's gone there. So let's check. Um, that's a long one. So what does it say? It says link base. Okay, it complains about something. Um, so assets, CSS, PDF. So it cannot resolve um, the path because, uh, 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 let's get to the meat of it. Unless the context used for executing the engine implements the interface, there we go, iSpring Web Flux context. All right, so this is the thing. Um, in the HTML, uh, in our template, um, I'm using those path and Spring complains or time leaf complains that it cannot resolve those um, because that's context relative and there's no, no request that it could use to resolve those. Right? Those are there if you just use the template directly, but if we if you use the engine as in that case, that is not um, able to be resolved. So let's go back to the PDF controller and fix that. So what we need is another context. So here I've used that empty context, but we should use a different one. So let's create one. I want to use the Spring Web Flux um, context, I think it is, because this one um, implements the interface that was just missing. So, um, but to create that, what I need is a server web exchange. So I'd get some more details on, on, on the actual request, but I can easily inject that. So I can use server web exchange. Uh, Spring will just give this to me. And then I can pipe it in here. And now I can replace this dummy context with an actual context. So that should 
fix the issue. Let's restart the application. Uh, let's see. It's restarting. Let's go back to Safari. Uh, let's start this again, PDF. That looks better. So we can see that something is rendered and this is actually a PDF, right? This is no longer HTML, this is the PDF. Um, but it looks weird. It looks quite weird because it seems that the image is missing and it doesn't seem to apply any CSS. So it seems those are missing. And let's see if that's actually the case. We can see there are a few errors. Uh, they don't seem to be as severe as the previous one, but now we can just check what's missing. Okay, so it tries to resolve the PDF um, to an actual file. And this doesn't work easily um, uh, because it cannot find those. And, and this error is now coming from um, iText. So um, it tries to resolve that as a, as a local file, which doesn't work, but we have to tell it to resolve this against uh, an actual um, server path or domain. So we can pass some properties to the HTML converter. And those are converter properties, um, these ones. And I'm using apply to do this inline, right? But now I could say there's one parameter which is called base URI. And as with all Spring applications, this is usually this one, right? So this is our base URI. Um, and this is probably something that you could inject in the application because you want to configure this per application, right? Because especially if you run the application behind a load balancer or somewhere else, this might not be the, the direct accessible path. So um, probably you wanna make sure you have um, the, the right path in here, right? But for this example, that's perfectly fine. So now I set the base URI. Now let me restart the application. And then let's see what has happened. It's restarting, it's restarted. Let's go back to Safari and now let's reload the PDF. So that looks much nicer, right? So now I can see it does what it's expected to do. Um, here you can see, it looks like the, the HTML, right? But again, this is the actual PDF in that case. Okay. So I can see there's the first page and there's the second page and it looks exactly as the HTML used to look before, which is just what I wanted. Um, and that's pretty much how you render PDFs directly using Spring Web Flux. So you may be wondering why we cannot use the file directly, right? So we could just reference the file directly over here um, on, the, on the file system. And this might work while we are using um, the application in the IDE. But as soon as we package it up as a jar and deploy it somewhere, this does no longer really work. So I tried various ways to make it work, but I was unable to do so. If you found a way um, that works with absolute files, uh, please let me know. Um, I, I'm, I'm curious to learn about that. Um, but until then, I'm using the approach shown here. I hope that was useful. Um, if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments below. As usual, you will find the code over on GitHub. I will link to that as well in the description below. And I see you in the next one.